During the weekend of October 5th and 6th, this year of 2013, the Portland Retro Video Game Expo took place. And this video here is just to showcase uh, the, my top 10 highlights of what I picked up. These aren't in any particular order, it's just the 10 favorites of what I've picked up this year. Um, there were others, but I don't want to take up too much time just going over them. These are just the highlights of my adventure, if you will. And we're going to start with one I've been looking for for a few months now, actually. A lot of these I've been looking for for a while uh, is Skyblazer. Now, this is essentially a Hindu ninja game, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, you, it's a side-scrolling game similar to that of Ninja Gaiden or Hagane, for those of you who have really expensive tastes. And it allows, you can jump, you can swing and punch and hit things, you can grab walls and uh, climb around that way. And there's a lot of really interesting uh, puzzle mechanics around that, along with some other abilities you pick up as you defeat bosses. Uh, it's a pretty fun game, and oddly enough, by Sony Interactive, of all people. So. Just fun little game. I'm glad I was able to find it this year. And to continue with the Super Nintendo, I picked up Pocky and Rocky. This is most commonly described as a cute em up. Really don't like the term. But the game is a lot of fun. It's a two player top down shooter, if you will. Um, and you can deflect enemy shots and stuff with uh, an alternative attack, which you just swing basically a stick in front of you. Um, I was gonna get the second one as well but I passed up on it and then went back later and it was gone so second one significantly harder to find but still real fun game. If you couldn't tell not sue me their slogan was serious fun. Now let's do um, ah. Dragon Ball Z Bodokai Tenkaichi 3, PlayStation 2. Um, this game was also on the Wii. The Wii version is a little bit easier to come across. Um, and this one actually is the uh, bonus disc edition, which has a fan favorite fights disc, which was pristine when I looked at it. But um, I really like the Tenkaichi games. Uh, they really just made you feel like you were a part of the action. They really made you feel like you were fighting, made you feel like you were one of the characters. And there's a massive amount of characters in this game. There's 150 plus different characters. Some of them arguably are probably a copy and paste in terms of them. For example, I, Ultimate Gohan is separate from regular Gohan, or Mystic Gohan, or whatever they call them. Um, and then they have the I'm sure, different versions of Boo as well, so... But still, real fun PlayStation 2 game. I am really glad I was able to find it. This thing has been going up in price a little bit lately. And I also picked up from Atlas, Metal Saga. It's um, more or less a tactical RPG uh, revolving around tanks and mechs and such like that. Um, also heavily anime based, if you couldn't tell. It doesn't help that it's from Atlas, that's kind of one of their things. Um, I've looked at this a couple times online, but I've almost never seen it here locally. And when I came across this, I looked at it and thought to myself, you know, I like almost everything Atlas puts out. There's no reason I'm not going to like this. So I picked it up. And this one actually is also quite hard to find. Uh, it would be Gotcha Force for the GameCube. This is a stupidly addictive arena style battle game um, with 200 or more different little characters that you can battle as. Each one has their own unique little ability sets, uh, different skill bases, and I mean it it's hard to explain exactly what this game is but it's a ton of fun to play. It has four player beat em up kind of like what Power Stone did back in the day. Um, but this is Definitely one I would recommend getting if you can find it. I have been having a absolute blast with this since I got back from the show. Um, kind of regret putting it down every time that I go to turn it off. Now, let's see here. 
Ah, let's go with Dreamcast. I picked up Gundam Side Story 0079. This follows basically a, a subplot from the uh, series of Gundam, one of the earlier series. And of all things, it's actually um, a squad-based first-person shooter. Um, except it's not first-person in the aspect of, uh, like, your kill zone or your Call of Duty. This is actually a cockpit first-person game. Um, the game takes place, you're inside the cockpit of a mobile suit, just like from the series. You'd see all that, and you'd always want to be a part of that. That was something I always wanted to do, and, you know, I love mech games. I love all of them. And anything that puts you in the cockpit, I get really excited about. Uh, mostly because it just makes you really, it immerses you in the game. It really makes you feel like you're a part of the action. And it's really hard to say you're not when you're viewing the monitors and the little display screens and such from, well, what you remember seeing in the show. So, this was one I had to pick up. And actually I caught this one on a whim. I didn't actually go looking for it. I just saw it when I was going through the Dreamcast games at one booth. Let's see. And with my previous statement being that I love Met Games and that continue on, let's uh, continue the theme with uh, Steel Battalion. No, I didn't just buy the game. I did get the controller. I'm not going to pull it out and hold it up because that thing is massive. Um, and the controller does work. I have been playing it. It is a fairly difficult game, mostly because you've got 40 buttons and two joysticks and three pedals to deal with. Uh, but it, talk about putting yourself in the moment. I mean, this game just totally makes you feel like you're a part of everything. I mean, you have to run the startup sequence beginning every mission for the mech. And, <laughs> of all things, if you um, get killed, this game is harsh, if you get killed in action, if you don't eject before the mech explodes, it erases your pilot data and all of your save information, so you have to start from scratch. That is insane. I mean, I'm just glad it's not harder than it is being with the controller and all, but I'm sure once I get used to that, it'll be much, much easier. But so far, I'm having a blast with this as well. It just takes up way too much space for me to keep hooked up. And this is probably something that most people have at least heard of. It's a Sega Saturn game, and it's the, I'm pretty sure, one of, if not the most expensive one, Panzer Dragoon Saga. I have seen a copy of this about every year there, one or two of them. And this one's actually in a protective case, uh, which I can pull out and play. I have been wanting to play this ever since I saw it. I mean, it looks like a really interesting type of turn-based RPG, seeing as how it looks like an on-rails shooter. And I was always really intrigued on how the mechanics would work for that. Um, have not gotten a chance to hook it up yet. My Saturn is in a box somewhere in here. I need to pull it out. I need to get everything set up. but. I'm really looking forward to playing this. I've heard it's a short RPG, but I've heard it's a very, very good one. You don't have to have a long RPG for it to be good. And this next one is for the Sega CD. And this one I've actually been after for a while, mostly because I am almost, I'd say, infatuated with working designs, because they've always done a really good job of, you know, putting out a lot of production. They really just go over the top in terms of material that they give you. and Popful Mail, I would almost say, is no exception. Um, got a metallic cover to it. It's got really nice, shiny, popping out textures and everything. You've got a lot of color there. And it's a side-scrolling action RPG that's uh, got a lot of voice work in it, actually, of all things. Um, and a couple of, you know, higher quality animations. I mean, of course, you're going to still see their, the pixels and everything because it is a Sega CD game, but... It just has some kind of charm about it. I don't know what it is, but a lot of things Working Designs does I just love. And this, when I first saw little gameplay snippets of it, when I was looking up Working Designs other works, and I found this going through after searching from having played a little bit of Lunar, 
this game just looked really interesting to me, and I felt the need to snag it, and a guy at uh, one of the booths, I buy a whole bunch of stuff from this guy almost every year, and he had this sitting there, he had this last year, I didn't get it, and this year I decided to snag it from him. Really glad I did, I can't wait to plug in the CD and start running this one. Now, this next one isn't really a game, but it's pretty much essential for anyone who is collecting Sega CD. And that would be the Sega CD backup RAM cart. These things are getting really hard to find, and it's kind of essential because the Sega CD can only house about four saves on its own. This here can hold about ten. And if you're collecting Sega CD and you're not just collecting it to have it, you're collecting it to play it, one or two of these are going to be necessary, and these things have been getting really expensive. And the vendor I got this from, I only saw three of these the entire show. And the vendor I got this from, he had two of them, and he had them at the best price out of anybody. The other person, of course, but... I actually have been needing to get one of these, and these things have been going up so much, so I'm really glad I found one at a really good price. Uh, now just to figure out how to access the saves and clear it off so I can use it myself. Once again, none of these were in any particular order. It's just my top ten of what I got this year at the Retro Fair. Um, all these things are great in their own right, and I'm glad to have them, and I can't wait to go through and play through every little bit of each one of them.